Hey, welcome to the first video in our learning how to learn series. Um, it is from the best-selling number of a mind uh, author of a mind for numbers and the creators of popular online learning course, uh, learning how to learn, which is the most popular online learning course in the world and is especially favored by um, uh, Ivy League uh, uh, learners. Um, and those at Oxford as well. She's she's lectured there too. Then and the she here is Dr. Barbara Oakley and Dr. Taryn Sanowski. Um, mostly it's Dr. Uh, Oakley who's who's um, persevering in this book. While we go through this first chapter together, um, and there'll be a little worksheet to go with it afterwards, um, we should bear in mind our objective. Uh, we're going to use neurology's insights. Neurology is a study of the brain, right? Uh, insights to make sure. I am being the best distance learner I can be. This is uh, new for all of us. And um, finding out what professionals say is the best step forward. When you get sick, you go to the doctor. When your car gets sick, you go to the mechanic. You don't mix up the two because experts exist and they're worth um, factoring into your thinking. So two reminders. If you don't want a chapter walk with me, I'm just going to walk through chapter two, not read it out loud to you but just kind of go through some of the main ideas for you to keep in, in mind while you're learning uh, whatever subject it is that you're seeing this for. I'm just search, by the way. Um, you can just mute me and use the pause function on the video to read the chapter yourself. I will not be angry. Rewatch and revisit. These discoveries are relatively new, but they are the product of new discoveries in neurological research, right? So this is as good as it gets uh, learning wise, right? It, we, we finally have a lot more answers than we used to in how the human brain works. Um, and it kind of starts back in um, the 1860s when uh, Santiago Ramon y Cajal, um, always ahead of his time, shown here around 1870, taking one of the world's first selfies. Um, Santiago cared a lot about young people. He even wrote a book for them, Advice for a Young Investigator. He's also one of the main um, one of the first neuroscientists to discover the uh, synaptic gap. Um, so he was very much ahead of his time, right? So I wanted to give you this main idea from the book first, what they say is the most important idea in it. And then we're going to walk through chapter two together. And we'll look at some of the pictures first, then we'll just kind of walk through some of the content together. Today's scientific research confirms what Santiago discovered. We can all think ourselves smarter. Learning makes us smarter. And learning how to learn is one of the best things you can do to get the ball rolling and make learning more successful. This is the most important idea in this book. So keep reading. Okay, but we're going to go back to that later and we're going to go to chapter two. All right. Now this whole thing. Can we get that in there? No. Okay. Okay. We'll have to go the other way because the little screencastify thing is blocking it. Oh, table of contents it is. Okay, so let's do a little picture walkthrough first. Chapter two, easy does it. Why trying too hard can sometimes be part of the problem, right? An encouraging uh, sign here. Uh, we have two individuals. Um, one is a chess master, it looks like, and the other is a kid looking the other way. We'll get back to that. Oh, there we are. Brain scanner. Zzz. Someone's reading. Someone's not reading. A pinball machine. Ooh la la. Two different individuals or the same person with two different brains. Same person, two different postures. Two pinball machines. Two pinball machines. Someone who's frustrated with their studies. All right, and summaries and suggestions. Ooh, and we'll do these at the end and then I'll also go over the answer key at the end and that'll be part, but not all, of a little Google form I'm hoping to make to go along with this, okay? So, get over there, Mr. Surface. All right, bop, 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 bop. Let's go through it together. So, the story behind these two, they're in Reykjavik here, is there's a 13-year-old Magnus Carlsen, and he's doing he's going against a legendary chess genius, Gary Kasparov, playing speed chess. Now, you would think 
he would probably lose. It looks like he just gave up and walked away. But notice that the chess guy is still concentrating, right? Look, look at his posture there, right? He's still concentrating. So it means, or what this means is that there's a reason that he's up and walking around, right? Well, that's what this chapter is about. The, the guy on the right, focusing, and the guy on the left, which is called diffuse thinking, all right? So there are two different ways, and we know this through, uh, through uh, brain scans and neuroscience. We have focus mode. When you're trying to learn something new, you must first focus intently on it in order to turn on those parts of the brain and get the learning process started. You can never learn anything if you don't focus on it first. You can't circle around something and then decide to focus. You focus first. And that's the only way that your brain is going to be able to, to keep the information and do something with that information. Now, the second type of thinking, which is important, just as important, is diffuse mode, right? It actually helps us to learn, relearn, rethink um, stuff that we learn um, when we're in focused mode, okay? Um, it's when you let your mind be relaxed and free, right? Think of your mind, says the author, as a, um, a pinball machine. If you don't know what a pinball machine looks like, um, pinball video. Let's take a moment and look at a little pin. Ooh. It was loud. So if you look at that bouncing silver ball, that is the, this metaphor here, that bouncing silver ball is your attention, right? So when you uh, pull the little lever back, little plunger, and you shoot the ball, your brain kind of bounces all around. The flippers, according to her metaphor, are your efforts to focus or to go or switch into a diffuse mode of thinking, right? So you see that the ball is sort of, bouncing around everywhere there and they're doing their very best to keep that ball in play well this is the relationship between focused and diffuse learning all right goodbye so notice that the little plunger is in this person's brain right on the left version of pinball version the brain is in focused mode see how close together the rubber bumpers are the ball moves in a tight pattern your thoughts can't go very far the ball is following a fuzzy pattern that has already been laid out. You've had the thought before. Now on the right pinball version of the brain is in diffuse mode. Look how different they are. Let's take a moment, right? So let's say this, this over here is dramatic irony um, in a play that you're reading. And this diffuse mode might be just you listening to music, but perhaps that music might help you better understand when you go back to focusing on a skill like or a concept like dramatic irony in a play, right? We go back and forth between these two different things. So, oh, I like this one. The focus mode, eyes on the prize. The diffuse mode, eyes on the flies. All right, so when you have a hard task, um, it's good to go back and forth between the two. You don't want to stick to a hard task for longer than 25 minutes if it's utterly and absolutely frustrating and your brain is being flooded with cortisol, right? Your mind stays in focus mode as long as you keep using the flippers. But when you let go of the flippers, your mind goes free and the ball drops down into diffuse mode. You just have to be like aware as when you're allowing yourself to do that, all right? Kids who have problems paying attention, I'm an adult who has problems paying attention sometimes, like to imagine that their focus mode has a few extra holes in it. This may mean that they have to work on their mental paddles bing, 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 uh, to get the ball back up into focus mode whenever it might fall out. But it also means they can naturally be creative, not a bad trade-off. All right. So there are two ways you can get stuck when you're trying to solve a math or science problem. And as an English teacher, I get stuck almost right away. Or when you're trying to learn something new, like how to play a chord on the guitar or perform a specific move in soccer, the first way you can get stuck happens when you don't catch the initial explanation. So if you weren't paying attention when the teacher began talking or when you first started reading, there is zero point in moving on. You have to go back to the, the original piece of information and focus. Unfortunately, with this kind of stuff, going to diffuse mode won't be much use. You haven't loaded anything into your focus mode, right? You must focus first. You must focus first. All right? So um, some of the suggestions they go for diffuse mode, which is supposed to punctuate times where you're focused, right? 
Mm, let's see what coronavirus approved things we have here. Play a sport like soccer, basketball. Uh, maybe if you're alone, jog, walk, or swim. You can do this alone. Dance. Yeah, you can dance on the talk tick. Um, enjoy being a passenger in a car or bus. Absolutely not. Ride a bike. Uh, if your parents say it's okay. Draw or paint? Absolutely. Take a bath or shower? Of course. Listen to music, especially without words. Especially without words. You can't listen to music when you're in school mode that has lyrics. It will interfere with your learning. Um, that's any genre that has lyrics. Now, sometimes you can get away. I listen to opera sometimes, so like I don't speak Italian, so I have no idea what they're saying anyway. Um, if you have an instrument at home, definitely play that. Uh, here's a great one. Pray. And then sleep, the ultimate diffuse mode, right? A lot of this is like, what's the point if you're not sleeping? So let's take a look. There's our summing it up. You can pause it and read that to yourself real quick, right? Uh-huh. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at all those different diffuse activities he's doing. Oh, boy. All right. So here are some questions, and they'll be part of the Google form that goes along with this. And um, this video will also include the answers. So there'll be some other things that aren't here that I'll, I'll ask you to do as well. All right. So what does it mean to be in focused mode? What is diffuse mode? And what are your favorite diffuse activities? Ooh. How does a pinball machine or two help you understand how your brain works? What is another metaphor for focused and diffuse modes? And what are two different ways you can get stuck when you're solving a math or science problem? <coughs> What's the one study habit that you would change as a result of reading this chapter? Take a moment and do this. All right. So solutions to end of chapter problems. Chapter two, easy does it. The answer to number one, to be in focus mode means you're paying close attention to something. The answer to number two, uh, the diffuse mode is when your mind is wandering freely, not focusing on anything in particular. Your favorite diffuse mode activities are up to you. Uh, number three, the pinball machine helps you understand how your brain works. You can have two different types of tables. First, you can have a machine with rubber bumpers placed close together. This is a close together uh, layout mimics. Uh, you're tightly focused thinking, but when you're in focus mode, but you can have a different table with bumper space farther apart. This is like the diffuse mode where your thoughts can range much more widely. If you don't keep your focus by using the flippers, the thought ball can fall through a hole into the focus table onto the diffuse table when you don't intend it to. So number four, here are some metaphors for focused and diffuse modes. In a soccer match, looking like an umpire at the match is focus mode. Looking like a commentator at the match is diffuse mode. Hey, look at that guy. Look at that guy. Look at that girl. Look at that girl. On Google Maps, zooming in is like focus mode. Zooming out is like diffuse mode. You need to toggle back and forth between zoomed in and zoomed out in order to find your way. Being in a garden. Focus mode is like carefully spacing and planting the seeds in late winter. Diffuse mode is like spring when the garden emerges with unexpected surprises due to weather, birds, and insects. The answer to number five. The two ways you can get stuck in math and science problem solving. First, you haven't focused hard enough on the basics before starting to solve the problem. When this happens, you need to go back to your book or notes to get those basics in mind. Second, you have focused hard enough on the basics, but you haven't taken a break when you got stuck. Taking a break, five to 10 minutes, never longer than 10 minutes. Taking a break when you get stuck helps your diffuse mode to work in the background of your mind while you're not aware of it. The study habit you would change is up to you. That's for number six. All right. Thank you for watching. Take a look at the Google form, and I hope this was useful for you. We'll go through the other chapters as, as time goes on.